All right, fight fans, I'm about to get in this cage with Joey Beltran. So hopefully uh, you see me alive uh, in the next few minutes. Right. We're going to teach him how to, uh, how to properly hold some tie pads. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just go like this and try to hold on for dear life. Something like that. <laughs> You can blast me. Yeah, come on, let me, let me feel it a little bit. Oh. <laughs> one more? Yeah, 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 let's get another one. Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not even a kicker. <laughs> Welcome back, fight fans. Right now we're in Oceanside, California with none other than my main man, Joey the Executioner Beltran. Uh, we got a big fight. It's six days away. You're fighting Pat Barry, but before we get into that, I just wanted to go over a few questions with you. Um, in high school, I know you were wrestling in high school. Were you also just get like throwing guys around, like getting in a lot of fights, or were you like more like a peaceful guy? <laughs> well, the funny, the funny <laughs> thing is, is the way it worked for me is uh, growing up. I grew up a lot around. Uh, a lot of guys that always wanted to fight me just because I was, I was the biggest kid in the neighborhood, you know. So I grew up having to fight a lot, either fight or cry was basically the, the, choice, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the choice I had. But then once I, but I was clumsy, you know, so I would lose a lot of those fights. <laughs> but then once I learned how to wrestle like in junior high mm -hmm. and started being comfortable with my large body and then handed out a few beatings, I kind of didn't have to fight as much. <laughs> Nice. Until I started going to bars and then people were drunk and it kind of the process happened all over again. Now probably I don't think anybody wants to mess with you now at this point. No, now guys just want to buy me drinks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, or hang out with you and interview you, yeah. like us. Anyway, so had, uh, the, you probably have one of the best nicknames in MMA, the Executioner. Uh, who, co who coined that, that name? Uh, well, it was given to me by uh, my good friend Eddie Sanchez, okay. who also has a... A silly Latin nickname, the Manic Hispanic. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he, just one day we were at practice and we threw around a couple ideas. And it was about my, my second or third fight in. And he just one day looked at me with a twinkle in his eye. <laughs> and he just said, You're the Mexicutioner. It's so good. It's and it, a... it's just stuck, man. And it's cool. Everyone really liked it. And uh, it's awesome. It's been working out for me. Yeah, I love, I love that name. So uh, let's talk about when you when you bridge into MMA. Uh, we know you obviously were wrestling. Uh, I think you got, did some boxing as well. When did you? I know your first fight was in two thousand seven. But when did you actually say I'm gonna go into the sport of MMA? I mean, truthfully, I I always wanted to fight, you know, be a professional fighter. So I wanted, grew up wanting to be a professional boxer. Um, I even went as far as try, is, uh, filling out the paperwork and sending it in for the tough man competition. Oh, wow. And, uh, but then I ended up getting in some trouble and couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, so it always had just been something in the back of my mind that I wanted to do, that I knew I could do. I was going to school out in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And, well, I wasn't really going to school. I was enrolled at school at University yeah. of Hawaii. <laughs> And, and fighting out there is just, just huge. It's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. It's like I compare it to Little League Baseball here. I mean, every kid growing up does some form of martial arts. Mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. the heavy Asian influence and, right. and just the way people grow up there, it's, it's just normal. Like, if you get in a problem or you get in an argument, you just fight. <laughs> it's not really any hard feelings about it yeah. afterwards. You know what I mean? So, anyhow, I, I started training there at a gym called uh, Bull's Pen. Uh, run by a gentleman named Dino Fernandez, who basically just let me train for free because uh, I was, you know, I was polite and I trained hard and it was cool. Then I came back, dropped out of school, came back and was going to community college, mm -hmm. hating life. At this time, <laughs> I was about, you know, 25 and still in community college. I was kind of, uh, you know, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. And uh, read an article one day in the local paper about a, a fight team called North County Fight Club. Had some members in it: Eddie Sanchez, Jason Lambert, Manny Rodriguez. And, oh uh, yeah. You know, then I just found out where they trained, and uh, the rest is history. As nice. I say, it's at about there about only about three months of solid training. They kind of just threw me out there to see what nice. happened. <laughs> and it looks seems like it's work here. What I think twelve and four now, right? Yeah, it's been all right. It's a good run. So let's, let's get to you know, what everybody's talking about. Fight Night for the Troops 2 down in Kylene, Texas in six days. You're, you're going against one of probably the deadliest strikers maybe in the heavyweight division. So how have you been preparing for this guy? What, what's, what's going on with your, with your routine and everything? Well, 
you know, I've been letting my friends hit me with baseball bats <laughs> in the shins, in the upper thigh to try to prepare myself for Pat Berry. No, you know, I've just been really focused on, uh, you know, my conditioning, making sure that the gas tank is there. I don't want to get into the pattern of uh, standing right in front of them. I don't, mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. definitely not afraid to strike with them. That's game plan all the way. I'm going to go out and give it my best shot and punch him in his face and see what happens. <laughs> but it's going to be a little bit different in the past. I, I, I can't just walk straight forward because I'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get eaten up. So got to, you know, bust out a little bit of the athleticism and, and uh, boxes full up. You know, that's pretty much all <laughs> yeah. I got to do. <laughs> nice. So I actually took you viewers. We all know that. I think you're actually going to I think I think you're going to take him down and win this fight. Uh, and uh, then uh, who, who, do you, who else do you want to see after you win this fight, which he's going to win? Who do you want to call out in the heavyweight division? Is there someone else you're looking you're looking to next? Anybody in, in, in mind? Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I I'm just anxious to get a win, man. I need I need to I need to beat Pat Berry. He's I hate to say it, he's the only thing on my mind right okay, now. But, okay, okay, okay. Well, perfect world in a perfect world, you know. If you could win, then obviously if I win this fight, you know somebody in the top ten. Nice. You know maybe or maybe like a. I don't know, somebody tough like Ben Rothwell, somebody, somebody yeah, tough, yeah, you know, yeah. that, that, that'll continue to progress my career right. and get me up the ladder. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm not really interested in, in fighting any easy fights. You know, mm -hmm. I, I got to the UFC and now I, I want to fight big names. I want to be in big fights and, and continue to entertain the fans and, and move it on up. Excellent. Well, thank you, Joey. Uh, once again, we're, uh, we're in Oceanside, California at Pilot Built Training Center. With Joey the Executioner Beltran, catch him live, I can say that now, Saturday night in Kyleen, Texas, UFC Fight Night for the Troops. Okay, stay savvy, fight fans. We'll see you next time.